Hey everyone, I'm Becky Lander with MyConsultantTraining.com. Today we are going to talk a little bit about a free tool that I use pretty much daily. I am in Trello every time I'm sitting at my computer. I use the app on my phone. I pretty much live in it. So Trello is a project management tool. It is free, it is web-based, and then there's also an app. There are so many advantages of using Trello, and I just wanna give you a quick tutorial of how I use it in general for many aspects of my life, but also how I've been able to use Trello as a CRM, or a client relationship management tool. So this is what Trello looks like, just kind of super high level. You have uh, what we call a board. So this is one Trello board on a process for blogging and uploading videos. And then in each board, you will have a list. So we have lists right here that you could add multiple cards to. So like this right here is an example of a card within a list. Okay, so let me jump over to a fun one. I planned my Disney vacation using Trello. And the kind of the fun thing about this, um, well, one, I was planning a trip to Disney, but two, I had all of my information about my trip in one place. And we were there with my mother-in-law <laughs> and my two kids and my husband. So there were five of us and a lot of details to keep track. And I wanted it very easily accessible. So some of the things that we tracked in Trello is we had a whole list for flights and confirmations, reservations, some of the details of our trip, things that we wanted to do at the park. Um, and this was an incentive trip, so there was some additional information provided by the company on it as well. So when you open up a card within a list, you can get all the information that you need. So this is the travel time, the flight number, the date. You can add images. So it's a little bit Pinteresty, where it's really visual and kind of fun to see. Oh, we went to the keys after that. So there's information about that flight in there. Uh, I was trying to kind of figure out what days were busy, what days were not busy at different parks and what time they opened and closed. And I kept all of that information in Trello. Uh, I put down some ideas of different reservations we had in there. So let me just walk you through um, what you're gonna have in each card. So here's some cool things. Let's see, let me find a good one to show you. We'll just look at this one for example. So since it is a project management tool, it's really meant for collaboration. So it's up to you if you have a team to collaborate with or an assistant that you're working with or anything like that. You don't have to add members. Um, but like on this one, my husband and I were planning the trip together. So he had access to the board. So you can add members to the board you can add labels so you can decide that green means airfare and yellow means hotel. Uh, you can code things. You can create checklists. So if I knew that there was a whole bunch of things that needed to be done, like I had a to-do checklist over here, you can add, oh, that's not a very good one, but you can add checklists, delete checklists. You can add attachments. So if I had a file that I wanted to attach from any of these locations, you can do that as well. The thing that I love most about Trello is that you can easily drag and drop things around. So let's say I put this in the wrong section. So this is flights and confirmations, and this is really things to do. So you just simply drag your card and drop it on a different list. Another thing that I uh, used a lot was, um, like if I didn't need this card anymore on the ticket information, you could go in and archive that card and that card would go away. You can also set due dates on things. This is very helpful as we talk about uh, client relationship management and using Trello for CRM. So if you need to set a, a due date or a deadline for yourself, you can put that on there and it will remind you to take care of it by a certain time. Okay, so this is a really fun one, but let me just jump over to how I am using this in my business on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, I'm using it in a lot of different areas, but I really wanna show you how I'm using it from a uh, client relationship management or CRM perspective. So let's go into this one here. I've created this template for you. 
Um, you can have a copy of it and customize it, make it your own. This is exactly how I keep track of my customers. Um, I've probably done over $75,000 in business over the last year, and that is a lot of customers to keep track of, especially when you're in direct sales and you're really in a customer-centric type business. I mean, that's why people shop from you and not somebody else is because you're really taking care of them. And there gets to be a point in your business that you just can't keep track of everyone in your head. <laughs> you need to write it down. So I have a uh, printable if you are more of a paper and pen kind of person that I'll share with you. But I also have this Trello board that you're more than welcome to duplicate, use as your own, make it your own. And um, and really, that's what it's all about. I think anything that you're doing that is systematic, you really have to find the platform that works best for you. There are plenty of CRM tools and softwares out there, but this is what really works for me uh, in my experience. So let me just show you a little bit about it. So I have template cards over here, and then I have a couple different lists that I've already created for you. So active leads, active customers, potential hostesses, upcoming hostesses, potential teammates, and dormant customers. If you had another category over here, like if you had a brand ambassador program, you could put that down. Or if you had a subscription club, you might want to create a different list for that. But at a really high level, those are kind of the basics in direct sales. So here is a sample customer card. Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate, duplicate this card. So if you right click on it, you can create copy. So now we have a copy of the card. We're just gonna, you can put it where you want it to go. We might wanna put it under um, active customers and we want it in position one. If you have a lot of cards in that column, you can decide where you wanna put it. So we'll create this new card. So we still have our template over here and then we have our new card over here. So I really believe that you should put as much information in as you can about your customers. So, you know, things like my customer is Becky Launder. She has a little girl named Mackenzie that is six. And she has a little boy named Cody that's four. She has a husband named Jeremy. We won't put down his age. <laughs> um, I don't know her address, but she's in San Diego, California. I uh, don't have her phone number, but I know her email address is hello at my consultant training, consultant training .com. Um, You could put in their Facebook link to their profile if you would like. You could put their birthday in if you would like, how you met them, if they attended a party, who referred them, what's on their wish list. Maybe there's favorite products that you know that Becky really likes. Maybe there's things that she likes or dislikes that your company is offering that you want to make a note of and anything else that you think might be helpful in managing that relationship with a customer. So you'd go ahead and save that. So this is kind of your card description. Then you have a checklist down here at the bottom. So this is my new customer checklist that I've created. So once Becky submits her first order, I'm going to say, yep, I sent her her thank you. We've connected on social media. I invited her to my group. Now it's time I need to add her to my email list. And then I wanna set a reminder to check in to see how she likes her order. I think I'll set that reminder for about a week out. And so it puts a due date on there for you. Uh, in the comments, if you wanted to, you could hop over to your email. You could screenshot an order. Let's see if we can find one really quick. And I'll give you an example of what that looks like. So maybe this was Becky's order over here. Doo, doo, doo. And I wanna say this is what she ordered. So I'm simply copying and pasting right here in the comments. And it's gonna add her order in as an image. Okay, so let's close that out. And now you can see it's really visual. This is her order. I also use this for my team and keeping track of my team's progress. And when I do that, I create like a cover photo or a picture of them and their name on it, as well as who their sponsor is and who their upline leader is. So a very quick reference, I can um, recognize who that person is and, and a little bit of their information. But you can just use the order history as the picture here if you wanted to. So that is what I would do for an, a new customer. Let's say that she decides to host a show. 
So simply I would move her over. Uh, let's say she's not sure she's going to host a show. Let's say she's a potential hostess. Now she's in your potential. Maybe she told me um, follow up around Valentine's Day for a party. So you make that note in there. You can save it. One cool thing is if you are collaborating with anyone, you can tag them just like you can on Facebook. So say I want to tag Jeremy to let him know that I need him to help me follow up. <laughs> then you can do that very easily on that same comment. So now I have a note in here that we chatted. We want to follow up around Valentine's Day. Um, even better, let's go ahead and set that reminder. Well, I have the reminder for the 21st. That's a good time to check in. So let's say I check in with her and she says, yep, I want to do a show. So we're going to say on the Becky show, we're going to do a February 1st V-Day party. All right. So we'll go ahead and save that. And I'm going to move her over here to upcoming hostesses. As an upcoming hostess, um, I might change that due date to the day of her show. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I like to add in a new checklist. So let's go ahead and add a checklist. The cool thing here is you can copy from another card. So I've already created a virtual checklist for you right here. Let's go ahead and add that. And there you have it. We have mail hostess packet. I do a hostess profile before they host with me. So I get a little bit of background information on them. Um, we emailed them some, some coaching information to make sure they have a good show. I've been calling, texting. I set up the event. I scheduled it in Visly. I reminded her we had the show. And then another note that we closed the show. So you can save that. And then you can just move them back over after the show is over. You could put them into a new column, maybe called past hostesses. That might be a good one. So when you are rebooking hostesses in the future, you could easily take a look at your list. See, oh, Becky was a past hostess from February of last year. This would be a good time to follow up. Maybe even set a reminder on there that let's say six months from now, you want to ask them to host again. So she might be a really good hostess again on July 1st and save that so it reminds you. Say Becky expresses interest in becoming a potential teammate, you can move her over to that card. Or sadly, maybe she's kind of fall off the radar and she hasn't been purchasing for a while and she's in this dormant column. And maybe you're going to do something special to re-engage those customers to get them back involved and making purchases. So this is kind of how I use it. Um, if you knew right off the bat somebody was hosting, you could use this sample card, again, the same kind of demographic information here at the top, and then a checklist at the bottom. And you can edit any of these checklists if you have a different way of doing things or a different process, you can definitely do that. I have two separate cards, one for virtual and one for more of an in-home, in-person event. Then there's a couple other just helpful tips and tricks in here that I'll, I'll leave in here for your reference. You can create labels. So say you want to label people by when they hosted a show, um, if you need to follow up with them, if they're um, maybe a brand ambassador or a, a box subscriber, that sort of thing. If they want to be removed from your contact list, you might want to know that. So you can create those labels within each card. So going back to our example here, our dormant customer, Becky, Let's give her the label that we need to make sure we follow up on that. So all of a sudden she kind of gets this little red label over here. We'll move her back over. Let's say she's a lead to follow up with. A lead would be somebody that hasn't yet made a purchase, but is considering making a purchase in the future. So those people I, I left in that first column right there for you. Um, there's a little bit of information in here on just how to use cards and the type of information that we track. And then also, um, if you have a brand new lead that might come from your home office or your headquarters, some information on your process of following up with those as well. So typically, if I'm doing an event and I have a ton of leads that I get, I do add them to my email management system. And I only really create cards in Trello for what I call the warm leads or the really hot leads of people that are booking parties with me that made a purchase at that event, are interested in following up on a fundraiser, whatever it might be, those are the ones that I move over to Trello. 
So without getting into all of my customer data, I did want to show you just kind of what my customer board looks like. I have a lot of templates over here. I have events that I have coming up. I have my, you know, my spring customers, my fall customers. And on each of these, um, you can find people's information very easily. It's a lot. It's a lot, guys, to track, right? But let's say... Um, Let's see, we're looking for, uh, let's see, Lauren Miller. So here's a, here's a good example. This is my sister. I feel like I can share some of her information. Maybe not her address. <laughs> um, but her name, her kids' ages, obviously I know my sister. But um, just her information, the time that she was coming for an event that I was doing, if she wanted to be added to my group, and then um, some additional information from the event was added here as a PDF attachment as well. So you get the idea, but I really love Trello. I think it's a great tool. If this works for you, then I would take it and run with it. I love that it's free. I think it's great if you're just starting out. And as you grow your business, you might want to invest in a bigger CRM system, but this at least is going to give you a one-stop place to know, you know, where all your customer data is, what kind of information you need to be tracking. You can set those due dates and reminders to follow up with people. And I just really love that you can easily drag and drop people into different columns. You might create a new column that's called, um, you know, my, my Valentine's Day booking blitz. And maybe you have 20 different customers that you've pulled from other lists that have been past customers that you want to make sure you reach out to. So super easy way to kind of keep your, keep your customers organized. Um, it definitely takes work to maintain. And like anything, I think you just really have to commit to it. So if it's working for you and you're in it every day, it's going to be super helpful. If you forget about it for a couple months and come back to it, it's not going to do the work for you. So that is how I keep track of my customers. And I will also be sharing that printable in case you'd rather just print things out, throw them into a three ring binder. All right, guys, have a great day. Talk to you soon.